Hello and welcome to Karma Talks, our monthly yoga yoga studios podcast where we talk with um, yoga studio owners about their stories, their yoga experiences, and uh, and how they are doing. Uh, today I have a very special guest. Her name is Julie Eisenberg, and she's the owner of the Lighthouse Yoga Studio Center, uh, Lighthouse Yoga Center in Washington, D.C. Welcome, Julie. Thank you. How are you doing today? Good. Doing really good. Beautiful weather here. It's having a great day. Great. Uh, so let's jump right in. My first question for you was about uh, your Lighthouse Yoga Center. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that you guys offer a few different kinds of yoga. Um, I was curious how you select them and which, which yoga class is the most popular. Okay, well, we offer, uh, we offer a variety of different yoga. We put it into two basic tracks. We are a Kundalini yoga studio. Um, and so uh, we have a lot of Kundalini classes. We also offer a variety of hot, different Hatha classes. Uh, hatha, uh, flow yoga, we have prenatal, that's also a Hatha. We have restorative, also Hatha based. So uh, we kind of run two different tracks in the, in the studio and it's almost like parallel universes. We have some people who go back and forth, but um, a lot of people are, they either like their Kundalini or they like their Hatha styles. Okay, yes. So, so there's no one popular class. They're all kind of like, like uh, all... Um, it just depends. Our Kundalini classes are very popular because we are the only Kundalini studio in Washington, D.C. Um, so that gives us, you know, a lot of, um, you know, a lot of fame around that. Um, but we also have some of the city's best Tatha teachers. So some of those classes are really popular as well. Uh, you know, I, um, I am personally a 500 hour Kundalini teacher and a teacher trainer in that um, lineage. So um, I teach a lot of the Kundalini classes. I also teach Hatha, but I'm, it's been um, a couple of years since I've actually even done that. I, I stopped. We have plenty of Hatha teachers who can carry those classes. So I primarily dedicate myself right now to running the studio, teaching Kundalini and running the Kundalini teacher training. Okay. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, I'm, I'm happy that your studio has so much variety. It sounds like a good thing for your community. Yeah. Great. Uh, Julie, in your article on your website about Kundalini Yoga, you mentioned that yoga empowers us to take action to make the world a better place. So what have you lately been empowered to do to make a difference in the world? I'm sorry, you froze there for a second. Oh, sorry. Did you, did you hear my question or was it, which, what was the last thing you heard? Nothing? That yoga empowers us to make the world a better yes, place. Yes, yes. So what have you done uh, lately? What have you been empowered to do to make uh, the world, to make a difference in the world? How does that work? Yeah. Um, and the way it works is, well, before I came to yoga, I was, I mean, before I owned a yoga studio, I was a uh, union organizer, actually. And, um, and I saw in my work as an organizer that people just feel, particularly in the United States, feel really disempowered. They feel there's no way to change things. And I found... Um, I was teaching yoga, I was practicing and teaching yoga during that time. And I found that through the, through yoga, people began to take a little bit more ownership of their lives. People start to feel a little stronger, a little more secure, a little bit more, um, centered. And once you're, once you start feeling that way, you begin to feel like you actually can make a change in your life. And once you start making changes in your life, you can then begin to, um, look outwards. You know, you're, you're not so focused on, just the daily, uh, you know, the daily drama and trauma of life, but rather you begin to feel better and then you can look around and say, whoa, but there's other people who are suffering. So what can I do then to help them? And that's very much a product of yoga and that's very much written into the yoga sutras. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, and um, I guess now 
we can talk a little bit about how yoga gives us the tools to stay calm. And these days I can see how staying non-reactive can be very useful for all of us. And as a yoga studio owner, what are your recent experiences of using those tools? <laughs> um, you know, I think the biggest challenge right now for all of us is operating online and, you know, really working with our community to make the transition to, um, to be doing online yoga. That's not something that I, I ever really did before March. It's not something that ever interested me. And we pivoted from one day to the next, from being a fully operational in-person studio to fully online. We didn't take, we did not miss a class. We just shut down on a Saturday afternoon, reopened on Zoom Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. And um, that took a lot of, uh, you know, that took a lot of <laughs> focus and calm and, you know, and now since then just keeping everything together while being online has definitely been a challenge washington dc is not reopened yet from um covid so everything is still operating online in dc oh wow i didn't know that so when do you think that it's going to be open are there any any good news Next, coming up sometime uh -huh. probably spring okay but it's it sounds like you nailed it the transition to online but um, do you miss in-person classes? Did you yeah, the transition. Did I... Yeah, you're you're fading in and out a little bit. I don't know if it's your connection or mine. Okay. Hmm. It shows me that it should be fine. But let me know. I can repeat my questions. Yes, I just said that you nailed your transition to the online classes. But I wonder if you miss... If you miss in-person classes. Oh man, completely. We talk, I, it's, so we've started doing some outdoors classes yes. and that's been mm -hmm. really great. And then, and I'm sorry, there's construction. Um, let me see if I can go inside. Sure. Um, but um, yeah, so we, we um, are doing some classes in the park. So um, that's been really helpful. And we're doing um, a few small group classes at the studio, uh, but we, you know, we're only allowed a couple people, so I'm not teaching any of them. Um, some of the other teachers are teaching them. Okay, I see. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I hope you'll be able to do in-person classes again soon, because it sounds like it's essential to your uh, Lighthouse Yoga Studio. Yeah, it, it is. Well, it's, it's not, um, I mean, it definitely, helps you know we've developed a pretty good um online presence but yeah it would be really nice i just it's not going to happen anytime soon we're not going to be reopening fully for at least another six months are the predictions wow. in washington you know washington is a very, is a city that's very concerned about um you know taking taking care of other people right so it's it's people are very concerned about not getting other people sick Okay, yeah, 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 that, that makes sense for sure. Okay, um, so another thing I wanted to talk about is uh, something I learned on your website um, that your studio, Lighthouse Yoga Center, prioritizes inclusion, diversity, and community. Could you tell me a little bit about your yoga community and how it's being shaped with this um, lighthouse yoga center vibe the kundalini vibe well i mean in general um you know the community aspect of the studio isn't strictly kundalini or hatha or anything that we um anything that we offer in specific but one of the focuses of the center is um on anti-racism work and we've been doing that for many years it's not something that's just happened now because it's kind of in vogue, in style, and everybody's doing it. I mean, we've been involved in anti-racism work from the very beginning, from when we first opened. And um, so we, in that sense, attract people who are looking for that sort of um, community, which in Washington, D.C. is pretty, you know, I mean, it's, it's pretty big. And, you know, um, people feel 
very passionately in Washington about Black Lives Matter and about defending the rights of uh, people of color and diversity and inclusion in um, all aspects of life. And the neighborhood that we're located in is a very mixed race, mixed income, mixed age, mixed everything neighborhood. So um, we really, um, you know, it's important to us that we fit into the neighborhood and not that we just be gentrifiers who opened a yoga studio to serve a small proportion of the residents because that's not, that's not the way yoga works. Yes. Were, were there any particular steps that you, d you took to fit in the neighborhood? Say that again, I'm was, sorry, you failed. Was there, was there anything in particular that you've done to fit in that neighborhood? Well, I live in the neighborhood, so. Oh, okay. uh, so you're familiar. Yes, right, so this is, this is my neighborhood, right? Yes. <laughs> I've lived in the neighborhood for about 15 years. Yeah, so, um, you know, so our students are, are, we're all neighbors. And we okay. see each other on the street That's outside right. of the yoga studio, and we run into each other at the coffee shops, and. You know, it's um, it's the you know, it's all part of life in our little community. Yes, well, I I mean I love it. I think it's such a great way to just reconnect people in a different way. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. and you yeah. sound like you definitely do fit in that community, like that neighborhood. And um, it's and are mm -hmm. there other yoga studios there, or or the entire neighborhood is the only one? Um. No, there's other yoga studios. I mean, when I say neighborhood, I mean, we're, we're talking a pretty small neighborhood here. I mean, it's, it's a big, I realize Washington, D.C. is a big city, but, um, you know, I mean, the neighborhoods are very distinct. So if you live and, you know, hang out in one neighborhood, you're, you're, you, people, are, people tend to spend a lot of time in their own neighborhoods. I mean, there's other yoga studios, not um, not really down the block, but nearby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. What, what's your, what kind of would be your recommendation or suggestions for, for others in terms of building this inclusion, diversity, and community? What do we do? Yes. Did Is you? there anything anything special that you could recommend? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, we work with a wonderful racist, racial justice trainer who's been on our staff now for a little over a year. And we're about to launch, we do workshops, ongoing workshops with her, uh, first in person and now online. We're about to launch a five-part teacher training on how to be an anti-racist yoga teacher, which is a big deal because you don't think about it. But when you're in a, you know, you're in a yoga class as a teacher, you can very unintentionally um, commit what are called progressions where you, you know, look at, um, say you've got a student who's black or like, you know, and you treat them in a different way unintentionally. Very often it's even subconscious. Um, and so how do you as a yoga teacher recognize when you're doing that and how do you not do it, right? Or things like implicit bias, things, certain situations where, for example, you just assume that anybody who walks in the door who is a um, black or indigenous person of color is by definition low income. And that's implicit bias, right? And, you know, that's, there isn't, you know, you're like, oh, well, you know, you must be poor, so therefore you're not gonna be able to afford our classes, right? Or I have to give you, you know, I have to give you a scholarship. And, and how do you as a yoga teacher and yoga studio owner find ways that you don't commit these errors so that people really feel welcome and not prejudged or there's not pre-assumptions. So we do a lot of work with that, both with our students and with our teachers. Um, we've run other programming too, um, other anti-racism programming. <laughs> For example, we have an ongoing book club where we read books about race and sometimes related to some yoga-ish things, but very often, just about race and racism and we have community discussions about these and you know these are popular because people have a chance to come together and and kind of discuss these concepts and these ideas we also run healing circles we do two separate healing circles twice a month one for black 
and indigenous people of color, one for white bodied allies, where people come together um, twice a month and have open, honest discussions about what can we do as yogis and in the yoga community to combat racism and to heal from the effects of racism. Because, I mean, I think there's very few um, yogis of color who will say that they have not encountered racism in a yoga studio. I, you know, everyone has. And, um, and we think of yoga as like a safe space, but it, it's not. It's, it's very much not for many people. And, um, and so there has to be both healing and education around this. So we, we spend a lot of time and resources dedicated to, to these issues. And the healing circles in the book club and all of this are open to anybody. I mean, even and the teacher training too is open to anybody. It doesn't have to be people just from Lighthouse. I mean, we have students and community members actually who live all around the country and even up in Canada who join us for some of these events because this is what they're looking for is the ability to um, work through these issues um, as part of a, a like-minded community where they feel it's a safe space and people are really committed to um, issues of yoga, but also of uh, dismantling white supremacy. So. Wow, that's spectacular. You're, do you're doing a lot of great things to make um, yoga a safe place. And uh, this training that you're just about to offer, is it, um, who created this training? Is, is, is this the instructor that you have? Yeah, it's this, it's actually, we're doing this as a, um, it's three yoga studios in the DC area who are coming together to run this um, event, but it's spearheaded by this racial justice trainer. She actually lives in Pennsylvania. She's a DC native, actually born and raised in the neighborhood where my yoga studio is. But um, she moved up to Pennsylvania a couple of years ago. So we were talking about it would be kind of interesting to launch a training like this. So it starts at the end of October. And it's a five week long teacher training and it meets, you know, on weeknights. And um, so she is designing in conjunction with um, the sponsoring studios. Yeah. And it's open to any yoga teacher yeah. or teacher trainee. Wow. That's very interesting. And it's all online. So anybody can join from anywhere. Right. Correct. Yes, it's great. Online. That's very powerful. I'm glad you yeah. guys are doing it. You're on the mission. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and it's one of the aspects of it is to, you know, to make sure that our, our teaching staff and what well, used to be our front desk staff are also, you know, very diverse, right? We don't have, you know, just 25-year-old skinny white women teaching. In fact, I don't think we have any of those, really. <laughs> Um, our teaching staff is very non-stereotypical yoga. Our front desk staff too, everybody who's you know, from the neighborhood. So very diverse. Now they're not there anymore because we have no front desk, but um, some are still helping us out online. Wow, I really like this how you said non-stereotypical yoga. That, that's a, I, I think it's, yeah, it's quite, yeah. quite a thing. I like it a lot, non-stereotypical yoga. Keep it going, Julie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, you know it's I, funny it, it yes no i mean it, it's sort of it gives us sort of a niche right we're not like a, you know one of these big huge popular yoga studios with like five locations where you know we get like hundreds and hundreds of people coming in every day i mean we're very specialized space and granted i think there are people who aren't always comfortable with our mission and you know maybe they'll maybe they'll get more comfortable over time, but usually they'll go and find a different place to to do yoga while they're trying to figure out why we keep talking about injustice in our classes. Oh, I see. Yes, for sure. I I, I think there there is definitely an audience for 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 Lighthouse Yoga Center because you know um, inclusion, diversity, and community it's a big thing and it's just and and also it's it's just something that's important for everyone just to be mm -hmm. comfortable comfortable yeah. and safe um whatever you're doing you just want to feel this kind of comfort and safety and maybe even protection like i i'm talking yeah. to you right now and i feel like i'm protected okay <laughs> she's gonna stand <laughs> up for me <laughs> yeah maybe <laughs> No, it's great. There's, uh, there's, there's some of you. that. Definitely is some of that. 
thank you, Julie, I, I, for making yoga a safe place. I, yes, I, I, I appreciate it. And I'm sure your neighborhood and all the people who are going to take this training, they, they'll appreciate this specific goal that you're trying to accomplish. Yeah, yeah. Our, our, the folks who are our regular students and our members are insanely supportive of the studio. Like, you know, I mean, people just are like, I mean, it, it's just crazy. People, you know, will like go, you know, fight on the streets to defend Lighthouse Yoga Center, which is very cool. I'm like, wow, this is like, it's really nice to have such great supporters. Yes. Okay. So, uh, so and, and see, that's it. So you protect them, you, uh, you create a safe place for them, and they create a safe place for you, and they try to be a part of your, your community. Right. Right, right, exactly. Yes, okay. Um, yes, thank you so much for sharing it. Thank you so much for sharing your programs uh, on diversity and inclusion. Um, I'd like to ask you maybe a couple more things. Um, I'm curious about the discovery element of yoga uh, because mm -hmm. I think in your articles you've mentioned something that uh, yoga can be revealing, like it, it helps you discover who you are and, and then go out and change the world, make a difference. Um, could you share any stories on this? Of people going out and changing the world? Well, I mean, there's little things like just, you know, um, for example, I mean, in very, very micro level, we've had people who through consistent practice of yoga have really made some big changes in their life, sometimes have left uncomfortable personal situations like relationships that may have been um, abusive or jobs where they were getting taken advantage of. And so on that micro level, um, but other things we've done bigger, we um, supported a candidate for our city council in Washington, D.C. because we don't have a state. Our city council is, is really what runs um, the whole the city. And we did support a candidate for city council who um, got elected. And it was very exciting because she's somebody who's bringing in a lot of much needed change into our ward. Um, into our, our you know precinct and we've, we've done stuff like that we also um i think um in the work the anti-racism work we do because we get people from other studios and other parts of the country who get involved with that we're beginning to see ripple effects of how that is affecting people's relationships and how that's affecting um how people are um you know, coming to their jobs and their friendships and their networks and beginning to raise issues around um, anti-racism and white supremacy. And it's, and their voices are starting to get heard more and more. Um, you know, we've had some students who are, I mean, we are Washington, D.C. We've had definitely had some people in our community who have kind of bigger and more important jobs. And it's kind of fun to watch them feel like they can, you know, they're strong enough to really sort of like fight for change within their agencies. And, you know, and so that's been really interesting to see, um, you know. Well, the, you're saying, you mentioned that it's a kind of a micro level changes, but for me, this, this is tremendous. All the things you just mentioned, it's, it's, it's more of a, you know, bigger, bigger level of change and and I think on the micro level there there are probably much much more happening like a great um, yeah people probably discover many things for, for me yeah. a micro level would be like my friend just gave me a, some handmade soap and I thought oh wow this is such a beautiful soap and it's all handmade like lavender oils and all those essential oils and uh, and I'm using it every day and um, and my day is brighter because of that, just the soap. So, and I can oh, yeah. appreciate those little things, right? Yeah, I guess we're bigger than that. I mean, we do soap too, but no, I mean, like we have a student, one of our members is Lebanese and after the explosion in Beirut, um, she came to us and she said, you know, is there anything you can do? So we sent out some emails and said, look, um, for the next two weeks, we're gonna be donating a portion of our proceeds to the Lebanese Red Cross to help with, um, you know, to help 
uh, for recovery efforts. And she, you know, I mean, she was just thrilled. And she, you know, told like her friends and her family, she was like, guess what, my yoga studio is supporting us. And, you know, for us, it was very little, right? But for her, you know, it meant a lot for us to, you know, be like, yes, we are standing in support of the Lebanese people. And this is, you know, this was a tragedy that have dire has directly affected one of our longtime members. Yes, well, I, th that's what I mean. I'm, I'm so happy you brought it up because I, I can just see how you bring this transformation, how you make an impact on what's happening in, um, in your students' lives, right? And on a global scale, I mean, with, with, this, with this event, you guys, uh, you, you made an impact, definitely. And um, yes, and you mentioned you make soaps too. So what do you- No, we don't. I was just saying that as an example. We have students who do, but- Oh, yes, yes. Yes, but for me, I'm just like, those little things like making the perfect soap or, you know, making somebody smile, those are little things that create a change in somebody's life, right? And yeah. uh, these kind of stories that I always find inspiring and I always yeah. find kind of, it's just nice to have them around. Okay, well, I'm very happy that we had this conversation. I feel like we're about to wrap up. Is there anything else you would like to say? Maybe some, some nice, I don't know, something nice. No, to... um, something nice what? Some, something nice to, to start our day because I, it, it, it's morning here where I am. So I don't know if you have any, anything for me to kind of, you know, to navigate my day. I would, with your wisdom. Well, I mean, my solution to the every day is to get out there and take a yoga class, right? Because we know that yoga is a way to change your life and a consistent yoga practice changes how you feel every single day. So you don't want to have a day without a yoga class. So get out there and take your yoga class, you know, take a morning class, take a lunchtime class, take an evening class, uh, you know, and do the yoga because the easiest way to start to create change both in your life and in the world well the, julie it's actually a great advice for me because i've been kind of behind on my yoga classes i think i did a little stretch for 15 minutes yesterday but that's the only time i had so and i and i want like on the back of my mind i always feel like okay i'll do a proper yoga class and and then i say tomorrow tomorrow and sometimes it just doesn't happen <laughs> That's why your words yeah. for me, I, I just needed you to say this. Yeah, yeah, you got to make it a priority. It's like, you know, the same way you, you know, you eat lunch, right? It's like, you know, you're going to make it a priority and you got to make your yoga class a priority. You say, okay, every day at 9.30 a.m., that is my yoga class. That is what we're going to do, you know, and that's, and that's it. And it becomes a priority and you schedule around it. And that way you don't get distracted with like, oh, I was going to do it. And then this came up. No, this is it. This is like your alarm goes off and you go, now you don't even have to go anywhere, right? You turn on your Zoom and there you are, you're in class. And so, you know, and it doesn't take that long, an hour out of your day and super easy. So, um, no, it's all about, it's, it's all about just really focusing and saying, I know this works and so I'm going to do it. Yes, great. See, that, that's the word I, I needed, priority. I needed to prioritize it because I did have a few days when things were just kind of thrown at me, like this and that and this and that. And I, and I, and I that's why I kind of slipped behind and I'm, yes, but I'm yeah. going to catch And that's up. so easy to happen, right? It's like, that. it happens to everybody now. And then yes. how do we, how do we combat that, right? During this pandemic, right? We, you know, we, it, if we can go to a class, we'll maybe have three or four people in the space, right? And then we're always a little uncertain, like, whoa, is anybody sick, right? So it's so easy to make excuses and it's so easy to get wrapped up in our own personal stories. But the reality is we just need to break out of that and just say, if I know there is something here that is going to make me feel better, why am I not doing it? Yes, definitely. Why am I not doing it? <laughs> gonna make me feel yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's gonna make me feel better like drinking a coffee right you know it's yes. like i'll have my coffee and then i'll have my yoga 
Yeah, well, see, I don't drink coffee, so for me, it's just yoga is my coffee. I think yoga is even coffee. better. That's yeah. I was like that for a long time. Now I've slipped back into coffee, but that is my. I will say my kind of morning, but um, it's really it's not really it doesn't mix super well with yoga. Yoga is better for you. Yeah, I think because when I drink coffee, I get a bit hyped and yoga, I find, well, I guess it depends on kind of yoga you're doing. It's more of a flow, kind of this slow uh, stretching. So, okay. Well, thank you so much for your advice. I, I'm glad you're reinforcing all the good habits in me because I do, I'm a big fan of uh, creating good habits for in your life for every day. We kind of have the things that we're doing that make us empowered and healthier. Uh, thank you so much for being here with us. It's so great to have you. I've, I've learned so many great things. Everybody, thank you for watching. Please join us for more Karma Talks.